This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. Good Things to Eat, as Suggested by Rufus By Rufus Estes Section 4 Beef, Veal, and Pork Beef en Casserole have a steak cut two inches thick and broil two minutes on each side. Lay in a casserole and pour around two cups of rich brown sauce. Add three onions cut in halves. Beef Hash Cakes Chop cold corned beef fine and add a little more than the same measure of cold boiled potatoes. Chopped less fine than the beef. Season with onion juice. Make into small cakes and brown in butter or beef drippings. Serve each cake on a slice of buttered toast, moistened slightly. Beef Ragu Another way to serve the remnants of cold meat is to melt one rounding tablespoon of butter in a pan and let it brown lightly. Add two rounding tablespoons of flour and stir until smooth and browned. Add one cup of strained tomato and one cup of stock or strained gravy, or part gravy and part water. When this sauce is thickened, add two cups of meat cut in small thin slices or shavings. Stir until heated through, but no longer, as that will harden the meat. Season with salt and pepper and serve at once. Boiled Boned Ham Wash a ham. Place it in a saucepan, cover with cold water, and boil for four or five hours according to its size. Take out the bone, roll the ham, and place it in a basin with a large weight on top. When cold, put it on a dish, and garnish with parsley, and serve. Boned Ham Have the bone taken from a small ham, and put into a kettle of cold water with one onion cut in quarters, a dozen cloves, and a bay leaf. Cook slowly until tender, and do not test it until you have allowed fifteen minutes to the pound. Take from the kettle, remove the skin, brush with beaten egg, sprinkle with bread crumbs, and set in the oven to brown. Breaded Cutlets Have the cutlets cut into portions of the right size for serving. Dust each side with salt and pepper. Beat one egg with a tablespoon of cold water. Dip the cutlets in this and roll in fine bread crumbs. Fry three slices of salt pork in the frying pan and cook the cutlets in this fat. As veal must be well done to be wholesome, cook it slowly about 15 minutes. Serve with a gravy made from the contents of the pan or with a tomato sauce. Broiled liver and bacon. As broiling, in most cases, is wasteful, the liver and bacon are generally fried together, but the dish is somewhat spoiled by this method. The best way is to fry the well-trimmed slices of bacon, and after having washed and sliced the liver, say, a third of an inch thick, dry it on a cloth and dip in flour. Place in the bacon fat and broil over a clear fire, adding pepper and salt while cooking. When done, lay on a dish, placing a piece of bacon on each piece of liver. Broiled Pig's Feet Clean thoroughly as many pig's feet as are required, and split lengthwise in halves, tying them with a broad tape so they will not open in cooking. Put in a saucepan with a seasoning of parsley, thyme, bay leaf, allspice, carrots, and onions, with sufficient water to cover. Boil slowly until tender, and let them cool in the liquor. Dip in the beaten yolks of eggs and warmed butter. Sprinkle with salt and pepper, and cover with bread crumbs seasoned with very finely chopped shallot and parsley. Put on a gridiron over a clear fire, and broil until well and evenly browned. Unbind and arrange on a dish garnish with fried parsley and serve broiled sheep's kidneys to broil sheep's kidneys cut them open put them on small skewers 
season with salt and pepper, and broil. When done, serve with shallot or maitre d'hôtel sauce. Brunswick Stew Cut up one chicken, preferably a good fat hen, cover with cold water, season with salt and pepper, and cook slowly until about half done. Add six ears of green corn, splitting through the kernels, one pint butter beans, and six large tomatoes chopped fine. A little onion may be added if desired. Cook until the vegetables are thoroughly done, but very slowly, so as to avoid burning. Add strips of pastry for dumplings, and cook five minutes. Fresh pork can be used in place of the chicken, and canned vegetables instead of the fresh. Calves' Tongues Wash and put into a saucepan with half a dozen slices of carrot, an onion sliced, five cloves, a teaspoon of whole peppercorns, and half a level teaspoon of salt. Cover with boiling water and simmer until tender. Drain and cool a little, then take off the skin. Drop back into the hot liquid to reheat. Serve with the sauce as follows. Melt one quarter cup of butter, add three slightly rounding tablespoons of flour, stir and cook until browned, add two cups of broth, brown stock of rich gravy melted in hot water, one half level teaspoon of salt, the same of paprika, a salt spoon of allspice, one tablespoon of vinegar, a few grains of cayenne, and half a tablespoon of capers. Pour over the tongues and serve. Corn Beef Hash To two cups of chopped cold corned beef, add two cups of chopped cold boiled potatoes. Heat three tablespoons of bacon fat in a frying pan and add the meat and potato, add pepper and salt if necessary, and moisten with water. Cook slowly until a nice brown underneath. Roll from the pan onto a hot platter. Garnish with parsley and serve with pickled beets. English Pot Roast Cut one pound of cold roast into two inch pieces. Slice four good sized potatoes thin, also one onion, into a deep dish. Put a layer of the beef, one of potatoes, one of onions, salt and pepper, another layer of meat, potatoes, and onions, season again, add one cup gravy, and over all, put a thick layer of potatoes. Bake three hours. The longer and slower, the better. Frankfurt Sausage For this, use any part of the pig, but equal quantities of lean and fat. Mince fine. Season with cold coriander seed, salt, pepper, and a small quantity of nutmeg. Have ready skins, well cleaned and soaked in cold water for several hours. Fill with the seasoned meat, secure the ends, and hang in a cool, dry place until needed. Fried Ham Cut off a thick slice of ham. Place in a saucepan over the fire with sufficient water to cover and let come to a boil. Pour off the water and fry the ham slowly until it is brown on both sides. Season with pepper and serve. Eggs are usually served with fried ham. They may be fried in the same pan or separately in sufficient grease to prevent burning. Season with salt and pepper and place around the ham. Ham and chicken pie. Trim off the skin of some cold chicken and cut the meat into small pieces. Mix with an equal quantity of finely chopped lean ham and a small lot of chopped shallot. Season with salt, pepper, and pounded mace. Moisten with a few tablespoonfuls of white stock. Butter a pie dish. Line the edges with puff paste and put in the mixture, placing puff paste over the top. Trim it around the edges, moisten and press together. Cut a small hole in the top and bake in a moderate oven. 
When cooked, pour a small quantity of hot cream through the hole in the top of the pie and serve. Ham Croquettes Chop very fine one-fourth of a pound of ham. Mix with it an equal quantity of boiled and mashed potatoes, two hard-boiled eggs chopped, one tablespoonful chopped parsley. Season to taste. Then stir in the yolk of an egg. Flour the hands and shape the mixture into small balls. Fry in deep fat. Place on a dish, garnish with parsley, and serve. Hash with dropped eggs. Mince or grind cold cooked meat and add two-thirds as much cold chopped vegetables. The best proportions of vegetables are half potato and one quarter each of beets and carrots. Put a little gravy stock or hot water with butter melted in it into a saucepan. Turn in the meat and vegetables and heat stirring all the time. Season with salt, pepper, and a little onion juice if liked. Turn into a buttered baking dish, smooth over, and set in the oven to brown. Take up and press little depressions in the top, and drop an egg into each. Set back into the oven until the egg is set, but not cooked hard. Serve in the same dish. Lamb Chops en Casserole Trim off the superfluous fat from the chops and place them in a casserole with a medium-sized onion, sliced and separated into rings. Cover each layer of chops with the onion rings, then add a pint of boiling water. Cover and cook for one hour and one half in a moderate oven. Add salt and pepper and some sliced carrot and cook until the carrot is tender. Remove the chops to a hot platter and pour over them the gravy, which may be thickened. Then garnish with the carrot. Lamb Curry Cut the meat into small pieces, and the inferior portions, such as the neck, can be utilized in a curry. Roll in flour and fry in hot olive oil, pork fat or butter, until a rich brown. Slice or mince an onion and fry in the same way. Then put into a saucepan, cover with boiling water, and simmer until the bones and gristly pieces will slip out. When the meat is sufficiently tender, add a cupful each strained tomato and rice, then a powder. Cook ten minutes longer and serve. Meat pie. Chop fine enough of cold roast beef to make two cupfuls, also one small onion. Pare as many potatoes as desired and boil. Mash and cream as for mashed potatoes. Drain a cupful of tomato liquid free from seeds. Stir meat, onion, and tomato juice together. Put in a deep dish, spread potatoes over the top, and bake in a hot oven. Minced Mutton Mince the meat from a cold roast of mutton. Put into a saucepan. Make a roux. Moisten with a little stock and season with salt and pepper, adding butter and some gherkins. Put the minced meat into the sauce and let it cook without boiling. Serve with thin slices of bread around the plate. Pig's Ears Lyonnaise. Singe off all the hair from pig's ears, scrape and wash well, and cut lengthwise into strips. Place them in a saucepan with a little stock, add a small quantity of flour, a few slices of onion fried, salt and pepper to taste. Place the pan over a slow fire and simmer until the ears are thoroughly cooked. Arrange on a dish, add a little lemon juice to the liquor, and pour over the ears. Serve with a garnish of fried bread. Pork Cutlets and Anchovy Sauce Broil on a well-greased gridiron over the fire nicely cut and trimmed cutlets of pork. Place frills on the bones of the cutlets. Serve very hot with anchovy sauce. Ragu of Cooked Meat 
Cut one pint of cold meat into half-inch dice, removing the fat, bone, and gristle. Put the meat into a stew pan, cover with boiling water, and simmer slowly two or three hours, or until very tender. Then add half a can of mushrooms cut fine, two tablespoons of lemon juice, and salt and pepper to taste. Wet one tablespoonful of cornstarch to a smooth paste, with a little cold water, and stir into the boiling liquor. Add a teaspoon of caramel, if not brown enough. Cook ten minutes, and serve plain, or in a border of mashed potatoes. The seasoning may be varied by using one teaspoon of curry powder, a few grains of cayenne, or half a tumbler of currant jelly, and salt to taste. RICE AND BEEF CROQUETTES To use up cold meat economically, combine two cups of chopped beef or mutton with two cups of freshly boiled rice. Season well with salt, pepper, onion juice, and a large teaspoon of minced parsley, and a teaspoon of lemon juice. Pack on a large plate and set away to cool. After the mixture is cold, shape into croquettes, dip into beaten egg, roll in fine crumbs, and fry in smoking hot fat. Rolled Rib Roast Have the backbone and ribs removed and utilize them for making a stew for lunch. Tie the meat into a round shape and sprinkle it with salt and pepper. Then dredge with flour and place in a dripping pan. Have the onion hot when the meat is first put into it, in order that it may be seared over quickly to prevent the juices from escaping. Then reduce the heat and baste with the fat in the pan. When done, place on a hot platter and surround with riced potato. Sheep's Brains with Small Onions Take sheep's brains, soak in lukewarm water and blanch. Stew with thin slices of bacon, a little white wine, parsley, shallots, cloves, small onions, salt, and pepper. When done, arrange the brains on a dish with the onions around. Reduce the sauce and serve. Calves' brains may be dressed in the same way. Sheep's tongues. Sheep's tongues are usually boiled in water and then broiled. To dress them, First skin and split down the center. Drip them in butter or sweet oil, mixed with parsley, green onions, mushrooms, clove of garlic, all shredded fine, salt and pepper. Then cover with bread crumbs and broil. Serve with an acid sauce. Shoulder of Veal Braised Buy a shoulder of veal and ask the butcher to bone it and send the bones with the meat. Cover the bones with cold water, and when it comes to a boil, skim. Then add a little onion and carrot and a few seasoning herbs, and any spices desired. Simmer gently for an hour or so, until you have a pint of stock. To make the stuffing, take a stale loaf, cut off the crust, and soak in a little cold water until soft. Rub the crumbs of the loaf as fine as possible in the hands, then add to the soaked and softened crust. Chop a half cup of suet fine. Put into a frying pan a tablespoon of the suet, and when hot, add an onion chopped fine. Cook until brown, then add to the bread with regular poultry seasoning, or else salt, pepper, and a little bit of thyme. Mix well and stuff the cavity in the shoulder, then pull the flaps of the meat over and sew up. Put the rest of the suet in the frying pan, and having dusted the meat with flour, salt, and pepper, and a sprinkling of sugar, brown on all sides in the fat until the bottom of the braising pan, which may be any shallow iron pan or granite kettle with a tight cover, Put a layer of thin sliced onion and carrots, a bit of bay leaf and sprigs of parsley, 
and on this lay the meat. Add two or three cloves, pour hot stock around it, cover closely and braise in a hot oven for three hours. Spanish Chops Gash six French chops on outer edge, extending cut more than halfway through the meat. Stuff, dip in crumbs, egg and crumbs, fry in deep fat five minutes and drain on brown paper. For the stuffing, mix six tablespoons of soft bread crumbs, three tablespoons of chopped cooked ham, two tablespoons chopped mushroom caps, two tablespoons melted butter, salt and pepper to taste. Haricot of Mutton To make a la bourgeoise, cut a shoulder of mutton in pieces about the width of two fingers. Mix a little butter with a tablespoonful of flour and place over a slow fire, stirring until the color of cinnamon. Put in the pieces of meat, giving them two or three turns over the fire. Then add some stock, if you have it, or about half pint of hot water, which must be stirred in a little at a time. Season with salt, pepper, parsley, green onions, bay leaf, thyme, garlic, cloves, and basil. Set the whole over a slow fire, and when half done, skim off as much fat as possible. Have ready some turnips, cut in pieces, and stew with the meat. When done, take out the herbs and skim off what fat remains, reducing the stock if too thin. Veal Croquettes Make a thick sauce from one cup of milk, two level tablespoons of butter, and four level tablespoons of flour. Cook five minutes, season with salt, pepper and celery salt, and a few drops of lemon juice, and a tablespoon of finely minced parsley. Add two cups of cold, cooked veal, chopped fine, and cool the mixture. Shape into little rolls. Dip in an egg beaten with one tablespoon of water. Then roll in fine bread crumbs. Fry in deep smoking hot fat. Be sure to coat the whole surface with egg and to have the fat very hot, as the mixture has been cooked once and merely needs beating to the center and browning on the outside. Veal Loaf Mince fine three pounds lean raw veal and a quarter of a pound of fat pork. Add a half onion chopped fine or grated, a small tablespoonful of salt, a teaspoonful pepper, and a teaspoonful seasoning herbs. Mix well. Add two-thirds of a cup cracker crumbs, a half cup veal gravy, the yolk of one egg, and the whites of two beaten together. Form into a loaf, pressing firmly together. Brush over with the yolk of an egg, dust with finely rolled cracker crumbs, and set in a greased rack in the dripping pan. When it begins to brown, turn a cup of hot water into the pan, and baste frequently until done. It will take about an hour and a half in a moderate oven. Veal Patties Make a sauce of two level tablespoons each of butter and flour, one cup of stock or boiling water, and one cup of thin cream. Cook five minutes. Add two cups of finely chopped cooked veal, half a level teaspoon of salt, a salt spoon of pepper, also the beaten yolks of two eggs, and a tablespoon of finely minced parsley. As soon as the egg thickens, take from the fire and fill hot pastry cases. Virginia Stew A half-grown chicken, or two squirrels, one slice of salt pork, twelve large tomatoes, three cups of lima beans, one large onion, two large Irish potatoes, twelve ears of corn, 
one fourth pound of butter, one fourth pound of lard, one gallon of boiling water, two tablespoons full of salt and pepper. Mix as any ordinary soup and let it cook for a couple of hours or more. Then serve. Broiling steak. While many prefer steak fairly well done, still the great majority desire to have it either rare or certainly not overdone. For those who wish a steak well done, completely through, and still not to have the outside crisp to a sender, it is necessary to cut the steak, possibly as thin as one half inch, and then the outside can have that delicious and intense scorching which quickly prevents the escape of juices, and also gives the slightly burned taste, which, at its perfect condition, is the most delicious flavor, from my own preference, that can be given to a steak. By this I do not mean a steak burned to a cinder, but slightly scorched over a very hot fire. For rare broiled steak. For those who are fond of rare steak, it can be cut from one inch to one and one quarter inches in thickness, and the outside thoroughly and quickly broiled, leaving the inside practically only partially cooked, so that the blood will follow the knife, and still the steak has been heated completely through, and a thin crust on either side has been well cooked, which has formed the shell to retain the juices. Properly frying steak. To fry steak properly, although some claim it is not proper to fry steak under any circumstances, it is necessary to have the butter, oleo, fat, or grease piping hot for two reasons. First, the steak sears over quickly, and the juices are thus retained within the steak to better advantage than by the slow process of cooking. But even more important is the fact that the incrustation thus formed not only holds the juices within the steak, but prevents the fat from penetrating and making the steak greasy, uh, soggy, and unattractive. As a rule, however, we must acknowledge that broiled steak is, in varying degrees, largely superior to fried steak. Broiled loin steaks. Two loin steaks of about a pound each. Season with salt and pepper to taste. Baste on either side with a little oil. Place on a broiler over a bright charcoal fire and broil for six minutes on each side. Serve on a hot dish with Bordeaux sauce and garnish with rounds of marrow. Fried Hamburg Steak with Russian Sauce Select a piece of buttock beef, remove the fat, and chop very fine. Add finely chopped shallot, two eggs, salt, pepper, and grated nutmeg. Mix well and form into balls. Roll in bread crumbs and fry with a little clarified butter four or five minutes, turning frequently. Serve with Russian Sauce Fried Sausage Meat Roll sausage meat into little balls, wrapping each in a thin rasher of bacon and fasten with a skewer. Fry lightly in a little butter. Serve with fried parsley and croutons of fried bread. Serve hot. Roast Beef American Style Lay the meat on sticks in a dripping pan so as not to touch the water which is placed in the bottom of the pan. Season with salt and pepper and roast for three or four hours, basting frequently. When done, sift over the top brown cracker crumbs and garnish with parsley. Roast Beef on a Spit Remove most of the flap from sirloin and trim neatly. Have a clear, brisk fire and place the meat close to it for the first half hour. Then move it farther away, basting frequently, and when done, sprinkle well with salt. The gravy may be prepared by taking the meat from the dripping pan, which will have a brown sediment. Pour in some boiling water and salt. 
strain over the meat. A thickening of flour may be added if necessary. Garnish with horse radish and serve with horse radish sauce. Roast ribs of beef. Break off the ends of the bones of the desired amount of ribs, take out the shin bone, and place the meat in a baking pan. Sprinkle with salt and spread with small lumps of butter over it and dust with flour. Baking in a moderate oven till done. Serve hot and garnish with horseradish. Roast Shoulder of Pork Remove the bone from a shoulder of pork and spread it over inside with a stuffing of sage and onions, filling the cavity where the bone was taken out. Roll up and secure with a string. Put in a pan and roast in a very hot oven till done. When done, put on a dish. Skim off the fat in the pan. Add a little water and a tablespoon of made mustard. Boil the gravy once and pass through a strainer over the meat and serve. Smoked Beef with Cream Place the finely minced beef in a stew pan with a lump of butter, cooking it for two minutes, and moisten slightly with a little cream. Add two tablespoonfuls of bechamel sauce. Serve as soon as it boils up. Steak Cut the steak half an inch thick from between the two ribs, remove all gristle and fat, and trim in the shape of a flat pear. Sprinkle both sides with salt, pepper, and oil to prevent outside hardening. Broil ten minutes over a moderate and even fire. Place about four ounces of maitre d'hotel butter on a dish. Lay the steak upon it and garnish with fried potatoes, serving either piquant, d'italien, or tomato sauce. Stewed Sausage with Cabbage Procure a medium-sized white cabbage, remove all the green leaves, and cut it into quarters, removing the center stalks. Wash thoroughly in cold water, drain well, and cut into small pieces. Put in boiling salted water for five minutes. Take out and put in cold water and cool moderately. Drain in a colander and put in a saucepan with one gill of fat from soup stock or one ounce of butter. Season with a pinch of salt and one half pinch of pepper, a medium-sized onion and a carrot cut into small quarters. Put on the cover of the saucepan Set on a moderate fire and cook for half an hour. Take twelve sausages, prick them with a fork, add them to the cabbage, and allow all to cook together for twelve minutes. Dress the cabbage on a hot dish and arrange the sausages and carrot on top. Serve very hot. And finally, suckling pig. The pig should not be more than a month or six weeks old and if possible should be dressed the day after it is killed. First, scald it as follows. Soak the pig in cold water for 15 minutes, then plunge it into boiling water. Hold it by the head, and shake around until the hairs begin to loosen. Take out of the water and rub vigorously with a coarse towel until all hairs are removed. Cut the pig open, remove the entrails, Wash thoroughly in cold water. Dry on a towel. Cut the feet off at the first joint, leaving enough skin to turn over and keep it wrapped in a wet cloth until ready for use. End of Section 4 Read by Dennis Sayers in Modesto, California for LibriVox Summer 2006